Welcome everyone. Um, my name is Tony Roskilly. I'm Professor of Energy Systems uh, at uh, Durham University and I um, lead the uh, Hydrogen Fueled Transportation Network Plus. This is part of a, a, a series of webinars that we've been uh, running for some time. This week we uh, welcome two speakers on the subject of hydrogen buses and sustainable uh, mobility and they'll provide their own thoughts in terms of from a industry and uh, policy perspective. So um, thanks for joining us today. Um, first speaker is Tom Greenshield, he's head of business development uh, Right Bus. He's um, involved in Right Bus development activity in Scotland and the North East and had previously worked for uh, JCB for uh, 20 years as a national and European service director. Tom's presentation will cover the development of uh, the hydrogen buses and the company's uh, future plans in that regard. First of all, thank you very much for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure to talk to you. Um, it's a rather informal update on the business of Right Bus and uh, the changes within the business and the focus on zero emission technology going forward and some of the challenges that are within that sector. Um, I am Tom Greenshield, Head of Business Development for Right Bus. As was commented, uh, I was 20 years with JCB, the uh, digger manufacturer, and there's an element of that that will become relevant as I go through this, uh, this presentation. Um, the, the two buses that are on that side, actually the one in front is, a, is an electric battery powered, it's a battery electric bus. And the one behind it is the hydrogen fuel cell bus, uh, which is really the forefront of the technology that we're trying to move to at this current time. So Wright as a business, uh, Wright Bus, the company, uh, has been 75 years in, in business and manufacturing buses in that time in Ballymena in Northern Ireland. Um, it was very uh, influential in the, uh, the route masters in London that everybody sees if you ever visit the city, and that is a right bus product. Um, they have expanded throughout the many years that they've been working. The unfortunate thing for the business was uh, much as the, the locality and I guess the European aspect of bus manufacturing and uh, the timescales between buying buses, the business actually went into administration in 2019. So right bus as a, as a business um, was then effectively up for sale by the administrators. And in October 2019, the business was bought by Joe Bamford, who is a part of the Bamford family and the JCB family. On the basis, it may be an interesting point for people to understand that you know, why does why there's effectively a digger manufacturer, uh, why are they interested in a bus company in Northern Ireland? Uh, and it's quite a sensible question to ask. The reality of that is the last point on there that, that Right Bus were already in the process. Uh, the point of 2016 of, of they had manufactured a hydrogen powered double decker bus, an 18 and a half ton hydrogen powered double decker bus, which really raises the eyebrow of you know that that expertise and that technology um, that left uh, you know JCB thinking we want to know more about this and also that, uh, you know, production of diggers, as far as line production and Kaizen and uh, everything that comes with it, the lean distribution is exactly the same for a digger factory as it is for a bus factory. It's very transferable. And if you walked into Ballymena these days, you would tend to find there's four or five people who, who are very much in the digger world who are now in the bus world. Um, and, you know, they're, they're moving the business in, in the right direction. That's, that's a nice little picture of... Um, of a manufacturing plant in, in Ballymena. I'll not labor the point on that, but um, this is the old Japan, J Japanese tobacco industries uh, plant in Ballymena, which was taken over by Wright Bus. And oddly enough, when you're making cigars and cigarettes, it actually lends itself exceptionally well to making buses because there's large open spaces for storage. Uh, so uh, that was a successful uh, procurement. Uh, just a, a timeline that runs through everything. Again, I'm not going to go through the absolute detail of it. But 1946, the business was founded. Um, I think the high point uh, when you run through it to any extent is the 2016 fuel cell electric double deck bus uh, and 2019 when it was taken over by JCB um, and obviously the launch of the products that are coming and the successful contract went with Aberdeen and London that have hydrogen buses operating currently, and I say operating, you know, well past 2 million miles now and 
delivering passengers every single day. The, the simple fact is nobody would notice they were on a hydrogen bus unless you read what was on the side of it because they, they sound exactly the same and operate exactly the same as an electrical vehicle. Um, so the, the business is very much focused on zero emissions, um, a very important you know, move forward because the market is turning. Um, last year, uh, as a production run, 75% of the products were diesel out of the factories. This year, it's 80% zero emissions. Uh, so it's quite clear that the market has changed. So they, they have a fuel cell electric vehicle in the sense it's called the Hydroliner, which I'll come on to in more detail, um, which we took to COP26 uh, and was very well received. There's a battery electric vehicle and obviously the old diesel uh, double decks, of which I do understand that we're talking about transition to zero emissions. And I fully understand that the interest in hydrogen, you know, zero emitting vehicles. I would say that, um, that I'm not defending diesel at all because, you know, it, its time is, is limited. We know that. But the, the emissions on diesel engines right now are as good as they're ever going to be. So that they're not anywhere near as bad as some of the products that are probably driving the streets in the UK currently. There's also a single deck uh, hydrogen bus, which is dazzling us at the moment um, because you, you effectively put the fuel tanks on the roof. Um, so you, you're not infringing on the passenger carrying capacity and there's not a weight loading issue with it, which is giving it a range of, of sucker 650 miles, which is incredible for a bus. Um, which is getting us all excited about rural routes around the UK, if you think. Highlands, northeast, northwest, west Wales, the southwest, on those long single deck routes that exist, and actually really leaves an opportunity to have hydrogen buses down there without a huge need for infrastructure, you know, a single fueling point. Um, and, and that's where we'll be focusing our energies in the next, you know, five, 10 years, because the product is, you know, it's, it's very good for what it is. And obviously, the older product is still there. Again, I, I will reiterate that diesel is here for probably the next 10 or 15 years. Uh, as long as they're clean diesels, they're better than, uh, you know, the 15-year-old product that runs out there. Uh, I'm sure some of you have seen this, but I, I think a, a good perspective to start is, is why. Uh, we took the, um, the hydrogen bus, the hydrogen double deck bus that we took to COP. We drove from London all the way up to, to Glasgow for the, uh, for the event and stopped at various partners along the way. The last place that we took the bus was to a school in the west of Glasgow, and it was the S2 yes, pupils that we invited onto the top deck. And we started with this slide. Uh, the STEM teacher within the school had told us that they all had climate anxiety. You know, they were worried about, you know, what was coming, because clearly there's a lot of negative news about climate change. Um, and we took the opportunity to, to remind them that, that it doesn't take governments to do things, that private industry in the sense of, you know, manufacturers are quite capable of doing things that will really change the future. We all know that fossil fuels, natural gas and oil are limited. I think the, um, the geopolitical fears, fossil potential wars, the independence of energy supply. Take, a, take an element, take a minute after this call to Google the pipeline that runs out of Russia that goes through Ukraine uh, and into Germany and also comes in, you know, to the ports in the UK. At the end of the day, Right now, today, that is being used as a, you know, as a stick to effectively beat the West with, because, you know, if Russia turned it off, um, a lot of Germany would be in trouble, and the Germans know it. So it, it's very important to understand that not only hydrogen from a from a zero emitting perspective, but very topically in the news today, um, you can see the things that are happening over in Ukraine, and the more that we can stabilize our energy supply and actually make it in this country, it, it, it can only be a, a better thing. And obviously, from a climate change perspective, having zero emitting buses, uh, you know, running on the streets for 15, 20 years is obviously a very positive thing. There's a, there's a carbon footprint of anything, uh, you know, that's that there will still be a carbon footprint of a bus, but it will be, we reckon, on a hydrogen bus, about 85% less than the existing buses at the moment, just down from a wear and tear aspect of tyres on the road and, and that, which, uh, you know, is the right direction to go. So what is it? What is a fuel cell electric bus? Well, it's a hydrogen fuel cell. It has storage tanks. It has a battery pack and it has an electric uh, power train. That's why it's called a fuel cell electric bus, because it is electric, the power train. So the combination of the technology uh, allows it to be a zero emission bus. But what is the fuel cell? 
Well, the hydrogen fuel cell combines hydrogen and oxygen through a proton exchange membrane within the fuel cell, uh, which generates electricity. Uh, and that electricity is then managed uh, uh, through the, uh, the electric motors to drive the bus. There is a small generator, there's a small battery in there that manages the output from the fuel cell to keep it current, constant, sorry. And that manages the bus, the electric motors of the bus to drive the bus. Um, the only emission that comes out uh, of the back of the bus is water. Uh, hard to believe, but, but very true. Um, it's a slightly Disney aspect. So, you know, we have the first operating uh, double deck hydrogen vehicle on the streets. And I, I make the point that we have passed 2 million miles. You'll see them in Aberdeen, you'll see them in Birmingham, you'll see them in London. Um, there are buses now in Northern Ireland, due in Southern Ireland, and Birmingham is making a big shout that currently, although you know we, we're not over the line yet, but it, it, there is definitely energy out there uh, to get a hold of hydrogen buses. Why, you know, what is the benefit of a hydrogen bus uh, over, say, a traditional diesel bus? The simple fact with a hydrogen bus is it, it'll do the same range, give or take 10 miles of a diesel bus, so they're interchangeable. The hydrogen fills in about eight to 10 minutes as a pressurized gas, but diesel bus will take probably six or seven minutes to refill. Um, and you don't actually have to change the cabin aspect for the bus. So it's the same uh, passenger capacity as well as a diesel bus. And you also have far less maintenance of the technology, um, which can only be a good thing in the sense of the longevity of the product. And obviously it's completely, it is a zero emitting product. That, that, that's the, the beast that was at um, COP26. If you look at it, it's a very, very simple machine. The, the, the biggest or the largest bit of kit that's in the back of it are the H2 storage systems. They are, there's, there's six tanks in the back of it, pressurized at 350 bar. Um, which holds about 26 and a half kilograms of hydrogen that'll give the bus, give or take 280, it's about 300 if you run the battery down, but 280 miles uh, of, of fueling. And then the, there are small amounts of technology within the, the battery system, the battery cooling system, the inverters, and the fuel cell itself, which is right underneath the tanks. And, and to be honest with you, that's it. It keeps a very steady temperature within the cabin. It's not affected by weather in the sense of an electric vehicle. Uh, it doesn't, it's not depleted by, by weight or by cold. It, it operates along the same lines as a diesel bus. So, you know, what are we doing as a collective? You know, since the business was taken into the JCB group, uh, it, it, it has meant that they have access now to their interest as a digger manufacturer on hydrogen and hydrogen powering capsule equipment because take take bus outside of the equation if you think of bus coach truck and digger so capital assets anything over probably 10 tons i would think uh moving freight you can see where if we can move an 18 and a half ton bus 300 miles uh with 90 passengers on it then hydrogen fuel cells are 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 here to stay and, and digger manufacturers, truck manufacturers and coach manufacturers very much looking at this because of the longevity of the product. You're not having to charge it for three hours, you know, in a station as you're coming down the M1. You can fill it up in 10 or 15 minutes and you can carry on regardless. So that, that for long and arduous journeys, for refrigerated freight, um, you can very much see that hydrogen is a far better solution than electric vehicles. That's not to say that electric vehicles don't have their place. Inner city routes, without a doubt. I think if I was a guessing man, I would suggest that uh, uh, articulated freight will become hydrogen and they will drop it off at a hub uh, and it will be electric vehicles that will take them into the cities. You know, inner city buses will be electric vehicles and ranged buses, coach and rural vehicles will be hydrogen. Um, it's 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 almost as simple as that. Uh, so uh, from the JCB perspective, they're also looking at hydrogen combustion engine for their diggers, but they're trying to remove the combustion aspect because when you combust, you get NOx, and th therefore it's not a, a zero emitting uh, vehicle. Uh, we have a, a, a business called Rise, which is the, is the supply of hydrogen. They they go to partners within the UK market at the moment, and. Uh, they will buy the supply of hydrogen over periods of year for, years from them to give to operators, whether that be 
councils, private operators, uh, refuse trucks, anyone who needs a supply of preferably green hydrogen, blue hydrogen, if it's available. Oh, well, when it's available. Um, and HICAP, which is a, a business that is a, it's a capital intensive business that's looking at the hydrogen infrastructure and would support the building or the financing of uh, stations for the, the production of, of green hydrogen uh, as, we, as we move into this sector. Uh, so it, it may just be, a, we are a bus company, but what we do is we need infrastructure, it needs fuel, it, it needs to be financed and it needs to be looked after. So the, the difference in, in the conversation that's happening uh, in this sector now, particularly with zero emission bus, and it's not actually that different between an electric vehicle or a hydrogen vehicle. Before, the, the bus operator would order diesel buses 10 years ago and, and 10 would turn up and you wouldn't, other than giving them the user manual, you could park them in, in, in the shed and everybody could do exactly what they would, you know, once you'd walk around it and see what was new on the bus, nothing had to change. With electric vehicles and hydrogen vehicles, it all changes because the technology is completely different. Um, so it's a partnership between the manufacturer and the operator uh, to stay with the product for 10 or 15 years. The, all of our zero emitting buses come with telematics. And it's not so much in the sense that we, you know, we can share the information with the operator, but allows us to manage the technology, be that the batteries or the fuel cell. Um, to make sure that they're operating within their capacities for the 15-year period, which means that the manufacturer is with the operator for 15, 20 years, uh, which engenders a partnership relationship which is needed for this technology because it is very different, although it's very positive. One tick that comes into us here is that the, the, the Rice have had a very long uh, history with Queen's University Belfast. They have what it was called, it was called the WTEC Centre, it's now called the Bamford Centre, but uh, the head of engineering, that is a PhD graduate from Queen's University, and there are not the three or four other PhD students within uh, Wright Bus currently, and the, the Bamford Technology Centre pays for projects for the people doing the PhDs currently and working with Wright Bus. But what's come out of that is they have put together an exceptionally good route mapping tool that we use for our clients, where the bus operator would give us uh, whatever route, let, let's just say Blackpool bus, for instance, every 120 bus routes within the city. And what you do is analyze the movements of them through the topography with Google Maps and everything, every single possible aspect given weather, wind, situation, you know, loading, seasonality. Uh, and it gives you an answer in the sense of that route 49, that, that should be a diesel or a hydrogen bus, or that route 16 needs to be an electric bus. It's not, it's very agnostic in the sense of, it's very binary, sorry, in the sense of its, of its output. But it, what it does is recommend, given uh, the route and the history and the type of vehicle that's in there, you know, what type of technology you should use for it, which is, it takes away the, the manufacturers. And it says there's many manufacturers of buses out there, but even it's a simple tool. It doesn't recommend the right bus over an ADL bus or over somebody else's bus. It just tells you what technology would work in that area. And these are the type of people that we deal with. Again, I'm not going to dwell on that. But it's, a, it's a UK business that is supplying to UK customers. I, I, I put this in because I, I think people will be interested, but the, the, the challenges that are out there, the, the one thing for sure is the lack of hydrogen. It's probably the biggest issue we have at the moment in pushing the hydrogen product. If, um, if hydrogen was as readily available as diesel is, you, you, diesel would not exist because the hydrogen product is clearly better. The cost would come down. Um, and, and it's, it's zero emitting. But as we move on this journey, there's a lot of infrastructure that has to be in, which will take huge amounts of investment, particularly for green hydrogen, which really is where we all want to get. The grid demand is an issue for electric vehicles. Um, there's, we are not convinced at all that uh, we have the capacity at the moment to, to fill inner cities without huge amounts of spend. And, and we don't see that coming at any, at any speed. And the planning law is to any extent would need to be changed in order to speed up the infrastructure towards hydrogen, um, to fast track it effectively, to make sure that we can get enough on the ground. The danger being that, you know, everything will electrify before it, we get hydrogen out there and we, we, need, we need more of the product to, to move uh, buses into the hydrogen sector. So that, that takes a joined up approach uh, through, you know, with governments 
north, south, east and west in this country to make sure that they are they are supporting the gap with the technology because as hydrogen buses are clearly more expensive, they need to be subsidised. Once they're subsidised, you get volume. As the volume increases, they become cheaper. Uh, as we get more hydrogen into the marketplace, simple supply and demand will dictate that it will become cheaper and then your total cost of ownership over a hydrogen and a diesel bus, you get parity. Um, but that will take time and it needs investment. Uh, so the last point, the bus operators need support with fuel costs. Well, so the simple fact is right now, the fuel can be expensive and we need to support it down the way to make them invest in it. And the last, so the last point there, curtailed wind for green hydrogen production. You know, when our wind farms are not actually putting into the grid, there's very much a question around how can we better use that capacity and hopefully, you know, put it into the hydrogen sector. If I've jumped over anything that people were more interested in, then please, my, my email address is there. Um, I'm more than happy to take emails on any subject around this. Thank you very much for a very interesting presentation.